gentlemen my name is Tristan Sartoris and welcome back to Full Circus you see that we flipped it we don't always do it that way um look I uh what is it called sensory issues or something like that I don't know I don't know if I have them I don't even know what they're, they're called um but I think I got it dude so usually I'm pretty bad at touching stuff like cotton cotton balls and uh my own shirt sometimes I especially the one thing I can't do like Fingernails on a chalkboard, that whole sensory thing, fine. Knife, fork, scratch on a plate, fine. But the idea of biting a cotton shirt. <gasps> Look at that. Goosebumps. Goosebumps. All over. Oh, I'm just thinking about it. Um, But anyways, <laughs> you, dude, it scares me. That's my Halloween, dude. You People are monsters, vampires, kidnappers, arsonists. <laughs> what are you dressed up as for Halloween? An arsonist? It's very weird. Um, but anyways, yeah, there's, there's a lot of different fears. I fear that just the idea. Ooh. Um, so that's, that's scary to me. But the other thing is sometimes my hands get dirty and I can't touch anything that doesn't have to be cotton at all. Like I got this wooden table. I got my phone, my laptop. I got a kazoo. <clears throat> See, very scared noise. Um, and it's, I got this, uh, grout or something. I was working with my dad and I got grout like in the grooves of my hands. And now if I touch anything, I just... Oh, dude, it's I'm freaked out, man. I'm scared. And I, I can't uh, Ricky put your hands down. I don't know what to do with my hands at this moment. So I don't know. I'm just going to do the whole podcast. <laughs> like I'm at gunpoint. Uh, I, I don't know how to fix it. I tried washing them, but it's just like ingrained. Uncomfortableness is ingrained in me. So I'm not a huge fan. Um, so anyways, this might be a bit of a shorter episode. Um, we'll see. I, I've, I haven't finished it, so I can't say for sure. Um, I'm doing this podcast pretty late. I thought I was going to have more time to get to it, which how poetic is that? Yeah. Um, you know, don't we always think we have more time? Oh, Hallmark, ring it up. I've been calling out Hallmark a lot. I've noticed when I, I watch the podcast back because I'm a narcissist. Um, <laughs> but I, uh, I keep calling them out and I don't know if that's because, well, I'm a narcissist, or because I'm genuinely getting better at my philosophical statements. So um, we can we can toss that up and find the balance. You know what? Who who's truly narcissistic and who's just awesome? So yeah, I I didn't. Well, I didn't um keep track of time as well as I should have, which is super unfortunate because I got this watch right here, and it makes sense because I have this watch and I couldn't get it out of the box. I tried pulling all the rubber bands and the ties and and um you know like. Wait, what time is it? I don't know. I don't know. I, I'll tell you when I can figure out how to get this watch out of the box. Um, and I, I keep buying new watches. I've this is my fourth one in, maybe fifth one in about four months. It's because, well, I buy them. They're like nine dollars, ten dollars, and like that makes it. <laughs> dude, there's a nine dollar watch. Yeah, you can't cheap it out on that. Well, I meant ten dollars. Oh, well, that was that was the line. You know, that's my threshold. I go, mm, there. Now we go. Dude, you know what's... I'm going to get back to the watches in a second. But you know what's interesting is that you can whittle down a financial decision to the penny eventually. Okay? Someone goes, hey, I would like to give you this guitar. And they say, it's 100 bucks." And you go, eh, I don't really need it. And they go, well, would you take it for... 20 and they go well yeah 20 is a good deal and they go okay well what about 30 and they go okay maybe and then you jump back and you go well wh how about 60 they go too high 40 we're on the cusp 50 getting near and then you start finding the balance and it could be anything like that eventually your price you could keep whittling it down okay like let's say you would do something for I don't. It's so hard to find the dollar. I guess you would have to find it, and you would have to just slowly whittle down. It's fine. It's hard to find a good example, which just doesn't help me in this case where I'm trying to give you an example, dude. Where is it at? Um, but you know what I mean. Like, if I asked you to watch my dogs, okay, and I'm like, okay, would you do it for thirty dollars, okay? And you would like to do it for thirty-five. And I go, okay, well, would you do it for 31? And you go, 33. And you go, no, I'm staying firm on 35. And I go, okay, well, would you do it for 34.99? And 
And you go, I guess so. Would you do it for thirty four ninety eight? I mean, it's too, of course. And how many cents could I go away from that before you go? No, that's my line. Is it thirty four, thirty four? And you go, oh, okay. See, now you're at sixty six cents, and I'm feeling like you're trying to get away with something. Where is the line? Eventually, there is a penny involved in every financial decision, where you have to go. This is too much. This is too low. This is just right. It's like Goldilocks and the Three Bears, but for wasting money on uh, guitars and dog sitting. Um, so anyways, point is $10 is a nice watch. And um, it's so nice that I can't, I dude, I can't get it out of the freaking box. And I don't have any scissors or anything like that. And it's, not, I don't, I'm okay. I'm not going to spend the whole podcast trying to get out of it because ironically, I don't have the time to do it. And if I did, I wouldn't know. So anyways, yeah, I've been working with my dad a lot, man. I've been pretty busy with that. I feel like I haven't slept in three days. And I have, dude. I've slept like a baby all three of those days. But I'm just feeling pretty tired. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I've just uh, been working with him a lot. And I, I haven't fallen off the wagon with my diet. Okay, let me just say that. But I am going to. So I don't know if it's necessarily a fall off the wagon if I sense myself willing to jump. I'm willing to fly, okay? I'm willing to leap off the wagon. Is that as embarrassing? Is it pitiful? Is it shameful when you say, oh, I fell off the wagon? I didn't fall, okay? I freaking skyrocketed. I was like, this wagon is not for me at this juncture. You missed my stop, okay? I'm fine dieting, dieting, dieting. Oh, what's that? Some candy. I'm jumping off the wagon. I didn't fall, all right? I consciously chose, or I'm choosing, about to choose, to jump off said wagon. Um, and <laughs> I know I bring this up on, on most episodes of the podcast, how I fell off. The truth is that I, I eat right or clean for like 60, 70% of the time, and then I, I kind of fall off the wagon. Um, so I'm I'm technically still in the uh, the black, um, my kidneys. No, I'm. Or is that? Can you have bad kidneys from eating bad food? Or is that just for liver and 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 drinking? And you know what? Pfft, I'm gonna stick to philosophizing about <laughs> um, time um, and money. But yeah, anyways. I still, I'm not trying to endorse poor eating, okay? That's all I want to say right there. I do try to eat um, good most of the time, except for uh, right before, during, or after a podcast. I think that's where I really try to shine. What's interesting, dude, is that I always feel my worst right before something big where I need to look good in it. Like, I... um. I'm I've been doing a ton of auditions lately and I'm like and I'm like man I need to lock it and I need to get better but but if I didn't you know how much more fun would it be to just eat to just eat it's so fueling um anyways let me go back okay back to the leaping off the wagon okay ha <laughs> let me focus it's not going to work um yeah it's partly because I want candy but the the real also, I'm not going to say it's the only reason. I want the food. Um, but part of that is that I've, I'm still trying to get my sleep schedule, and I'm going to try in food coma myself. Uh, I did try and do it a little bit last night, and it didn't work, but I fell asleep for like 30 minutes. It's kind of like that one thing I was talking about, eating your feelings. And you're like, no, well, there they, there goes my feelings, and, I'm, I'm, I'm stu and now I'm fat, okay? Uh, imagine that <laughs> where not only do you eat your feelings, but then – you're also trying to fall asleep and your sleep schedule is bad. So I eat all my feelings and I'm left with nothing but more feelings and more fat. And not only that, but I don't even sleep and I'm up all night. It's like all, I was trying to knock myself out, but all I did was buy myself more time, check the watch, to be ashamed. So I don't know. It's kind of like somebody, like people who drink alcohol like i just want to drink to forget and then all of a sudden the alcohol makes them just remember everything i'm like this isn't having the effect i thought it would <laughs> so i don't know man i'm just getting fatter um 
Yeah, what else is happening in the world? I don't know. It's really just been a lot of work, just the, like the past three or four days. Not a ton. I mean, the past three or four days, but not the week. You know, and the fact that I didn't do the podcast beforehand really is on me, kind of. It's not. I, I take no blame ever, and I refuse to. A lot of people try to pass accountability on to me, and they say, where do you expect you to do this thing, take out the trash, do these dishes, help out here, do this job, etc." And um, it's not to say that I don't want to, but pff, I just shrug that crap off, dude. Just so easy. And I want to take accountability. and I want to be responsible for something bigger than myself. That's why I don't think I can have kids or a, an animal. I'm just pff, I'm just moving on. I just I get over it too easy, man. And it's not always like that. I feel like I I used to get really hard on myself and I'd feel down in the dumps that I oh. This the littlest thing I messed up on. Oh, no. But then I overcorrected, and now I'm like, I still care. But I love me. You know when you're so self-compassionate that you're messing up other people's things? You're like, hey, you're affecting my day now. I'm like, and I love myself for that, okay? I'm going to allow myself the space to do that. I'm going to give myself the opportunity to freely screw up your day. Um, <laughs> it's an exaggeration, but you know, uh, yep, yeah, that. So, oh, guys, I don't know, I don't know. I I wrote down notes, but like really quick, right before I started the show. But I was like, oh, it's gonna be a short episode. We'll go for like fifteen minutes. I'll go through all this really quick, and then you know, I can get out of there and go get some of that candy. But now, none of the notes make any sense, and like one of the the freaking one, it's the only one written in all caps. It says "bringing back poser." And this is a thought I've had recently is that I want to bring back the word poser. All right. I just I feel like it's a good insult to throw at somebody. It's not like stupid or dummy, which is also pretty good. You don't hear dummy a lot. Um, but I feel like poser is a good you poser. Get out of the way, you poser. What is he posing at? Doesn't matter. It kind of leaves it open to interpretation. Um, I, you know. I wouldn't mind being called a poser. I don't want to be one, I don't think. But it's 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 just enough. It's like a soft, it's a soft name calling that I think needs to show up more. Okay. I'm as an aficionado, okay, I'm a savant in the world of insults and name calling. I love to insult people. It's like Tourette's, but for you know, I don't mean anything by it. I just, you know, I just I'm a younger sibling. Part of me sees something. It could be a person, could be a street corner. I'm like, look at the friggin' stonework on that, idiot. Like, that thing looks... And I'm not even making fun of the guy who did it. I'm just like, ha, ah, the architecture in here. Awful. You call yourself You call yourself a building? Um, <laughs> and it's just part of me, dude. And I can't stop that. Uh, I don't think it's mean. But if it is, I'm going to give myself the space... And the opportunity to do that and feel free about that and express myself in that way. <laughs> um, yeah. So the work's been nice. I, th I, I don't know. Has it? It's just I do more um, crap work. I'm just there to help for the assist family boost. Um, so I'm not really doing a lot of stuff. And, and you know, it's fun because the brothers are there. And, you know, we go, hey, you can't put a price on family bonding, which is a nice word of saying we're working for free. But I like to just be there and hang out, and I, I boost the camaraderie. And like I've always said, I love working for free because it, it – genuinely, I do care when I'm at people's damn spoiler alert. But when I work for free, it helps ease that blow a little bit. And they go, oh, you messed this up. They were counting on you. You go, well, yeah, they got what they paid for, you know? <laughs> so I, um, I do like that a little bit. And I just spend – most of the day slacking off and, and trying to make people laugh in general. What I've been doing today, and not even around people for my own fun, is I've just been coming up with stupid sayings, and I like to change things just a little bit. Like, you know, the, oh, I, I did this, I'm going to, I shot myself in the foot, and I like to say, oh, I shot myself in the face. I say that one on the podcast all the time. Um, instead of saying uh, robbing Peter to pay Paul, I'm going to start saying robbing Peter and Paul. And it just sounds like you're naming three guys. And I thought that was fun. And I came up, I like to give bad advice. Anyone, anytime someone's talking about it, like, oh, we could do this, but it's going to take time there. I go, well, you know, like they say, you save a step to break your foot. And, and like, what? Where's, where's that saying from? And I go, I 
as you don't know, somewhere, someone had it for sure. Or, you know, cut off your nose to spite your face. I say cut off your nose to spite your mother's face. And how bad does your mom, my mom's great. You got to be careful there. My mom listens to this podcast. I want to make sure. I know I never let that dangle. Okay. My mom's great. But someone else could say that. Um, I think that's silly. Cut off your nose to spite someone else's face. And that's pretty spiteful. You got to admit. So I like that. What's the other one I was saying? Um, it was it was not applicable at all. Someone was like, hey, um, where did the screwdriver go? And I, Well, you know, it's kind of like eating the rich to poison the poor. And they're like, huh? So <laughs> I spend most of my life doing this. Exactly what this is, where you're like, is he going anywhere? That's how most of my conversations go. People go, all right, this isn't, I. we have stuff to do. We have places to be. And I'm like, wait, 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 wait. Don't go anywhere. Don't please pay pay attention to me. I have I have something to offer. I don't know what it is yet, but I know it's there. <laughs> and and I like to just have fun with that, but I love to just change up a saying just a little bit to make less sense. I love misdirection, okay? Kind of like a little bit of the insults like I I'm I just add a little bit of chaos. Not enough that you're bothered, but enough that you go, "Okay, I get it." You know, like just slight misdirection. I'm not saying I'll send you in the wrong way completely. But if someone's like, hey, where's the nearest Starbucks? I'll go, OK, we'll just go down through the intersection and it'll be on your right. But actually, it'll be on your left. And you go, that was cheeky. So I'm just it's me, dude. All right. It's me. Um. So anyways, I think I've uh, is vamp the word I haven't used that word in a long time um, ever. <laughs> uh, I've riffed. Okay, I think I've spoken enough about absolutely nothing. We can get into the freaking news, dude. Um, I uh, I saw in the news here, and this is one that I actually feel comfortable talking about. Okay, this isn't politics. This isn't right or left. This is the serious business. It turns out, dude, that Chipotle has been skimping on their portion sizes. We need like a button where people just go, no, like I want a hot mob button. Um, yeah, so this has been a long thing that I've I've seen on social media for a couple months now where they go, well, you should film the Chipotle worker because they've been skimping on your workers. But if you film them, they'll give you more food. I don't agree with that. Um, imagine just like, I don't want to do anything in the in front of people or whatever. Like, I just wanted to have a nice. Imagine you were one of those famous people who just wants to work a normal job, and you're someone just comes and like well, put more lettuce on there. But let the person work, okay? Just just chill, all right? Um, but apparently they have been skimping out on the servings, which is pretty wild. Uh, it's not actually that wild. I'm trying to play the part of the guy who really cares. Uh, I think. My my true. All right, let's go back. Let's go back and let's give me a very authentic take. I would. The world social media is pretty hot on this. They're they're going crazy over the fact that they were skimping on sizes. My true opinion is, hey, uh, as a fat guy, all right, I don't think you can get more fat than that. All right, you are identifying the portion sizes by what the gram. All right. I mean, they it's a scoop. They've all got the same. It's regulation scoop size. And maybe you get a couple more pieces of chicken or rice than you thought you did or less than you should have. OK, but maybe they're making a judgment call because maybe we are that fat that they're the Chipotle workers are trying to help us out going. OK, all right. You're to the point where you're like noticing how much I've never I, I could not tell you how many pickles are on a McDonald's burger. OK, and I've had a lot of them. Um, and that is a different, different level of paying attention <laughs> to your food. And on one hand, I can be like, look, you paid for it. Get your food, get your bag. But, uh, how skimpy are these portion sizes? So anyways, it turns out Chipotle customers were right in their complaints about skimpy portion sizes. And it goes over to TikTok and people are saying you should record them and, and, and rumors of shrunken portions. It's such a crazy like how big of a fluff piece um, this is. But anyways, CEO Brian uh, of Chipotle said that they did a company-wide investigation. Okay, you have any idea how deep this goes? Chipotle was doing an undercover investigation to try and figure out what the portion sizes were. 
because somebody was like, hey, I need more soy sauce. I don't even go to Chipotle. Um, yeah, that's just kind of wild to me. And I don't know, maybe I don't. I just picture the guy like you all of a sudden have a new coworker and you're like scoop and he's like, Hey, is that all the, is that all the steak you're going to put on that? And you go, I mean, it was a normal scoop size. I thought, well, you know, you could put uh, half a gram more and you're like, okay, all right, chill out. Did you say your name was Toby? You have a name tag. It says Brian on. That's weird. Um, <laughs> but you just scoop. And he's like, what is it? Whoa. That's all the. Is that all the cheese you're gonna, like? He would have to be complaining, kind of like egging them on, because if it's an investigation, they're trying to help out. Obviously, they want to make sure that they're doing right. But it turns out that not only are they skimping out on the sizes, but nearly ten percent of all Chipotle's are doing that very thing. Um, ten one in one in ten of its restaurants were too meager with their dude. I don't know. I don't know how to feel about it, really, because I'm I'm all for getting, you know, what you deserve. But it's it feels like if you're going to do do it for that, it's not like I'm buying a Snickers pack. Everything's candy. Um, It's like if you're buying like a Snickers pack where it says there's five bars. And you go, well, there was only four. OK, I can understand that. But something like it's it's there. It's variables. OK, so how do you even really know what is the the confirmation how do you know that it was truly skimping out because what is the difference between this and this you guys tell me which one's bigger it's an optical illusion it was this one um yeah it's like go to an ice cream stand and i haven't had seen anybody sitting outside of the frozen yogurt and going whoa this is freaking i could tell that they left it was just about a quarter of an ounce different in the swirl you kind of drooped off are the swirls drooping more off to the left than they were before because i remember them being more pointy uh, <laughs> guys they're just like teenagers that are working they're then they're doing their best i don't think they have a vendetta against people and i think okay i think that you can, without saying, I want extra this, be like, dude, you throw a little bit more on there without having to go freaking, hey, you're going to give me the freaking extra chicken that I want. But they don't even want just normal chicken. They want more and more chicken. Um, I don't know. Let's, I, I guess you could criticize Chipotle. That's fine. Okay, they're, they're billionaires. They make more. But as long as you're not criticizing the freaking, the teenage guy, he's just trying to, he's like, dude, I make, just a few bucks an hour. Do you want you? I do you. I'll give you three scoops of turkey or whatever meat or protein they got. I don't care. All right. Just you want it. You have. I wasn't trying to cheap you out. They only. We only. It's the same size spoon for everything. We found out that Chipotle was using a fraction of a size smaller spoon at 350 different locations just because we're trying to save that extra time. <laughs> I don't think it's a conspiracy that they think it was. Look at this. It says um, the uh, they told them at MoneyWatch.com that some meals may have variability in their size or weight. I think all of them do, dude. Except what the chip bag or don't those are pre-made? Like those are thrown in there in general. That's that's crazy. Tell me, these people, the people who are complaining, probably know how many fries come in a small little mcdonald fry and there's no way that they're all the same i don't know guys i don't get it it's just we've always felt the key in equity of chipotle is these generous portion size so we want to make sure we're executing consistently i don't think it's i think it's being made to be bigger of a deal than it is uh you know again though i mean get what you paid for um but it's just that's kind of silly all right like i'm all for observation um, I'm all for getting your money's worth and then some, but to be like filing complaints and be like, I feel like 10% of the stores around here are skimping, not like we're starving or we can see my bones, but they just feel like, I feel like there was supposed to be another shred of lettuce right there. That's kind of wild to me. Kind of wild. I don't know, man. I don't know. As a master of food and as as your resident fat person, because I'm about to jump off this wagon here in a minute, uh, I feel worthy to speak on the, the criticism of food. You know what? I, I, I have these gluten-free cookies, by the way. Oh, um, oh, that was me jumping off the wagon, by the way. That was the start. 
I don't think I've ever. Jeez. It was a small bite. Dude. I don't care what you want to say about gluten to gluten or no gluten. What is the option? Tis the choice. Tis the question. Dude, not having any gluten makes it like, I don't even know. It's like sawdust. There's so much. And I don't know who made that. Mom, if you made those, they were delicious. Um, if you didn't, those were awful. Um, <laughs> there's just... Um, I mean, the cookie, it's fine. I mean, the argument against gluten, it's like, do you need it? Do you not need it? Some people are intolerant. I Well, I think everybody likes gluten. I don't think anyone's like, well, I don't like gluten. I think it's just one of those things you can't have. It's like lactose intolerant. No one's like, well, I just, I'm not a fan of lactose. They're intolerant to it. I, um, I love gluten, though. I think it's um, necessary. And I like things that are gluten-free as well. I'm not one of those people that will have it and go, oh my gosh, there's no gluten in this. This is a problem. I'll still enjoy it, but I'm never going to be like, you can't taste the difference. Yeah, yeah, dude, not only can I taste it, I chew it for four times as long. And I feel like gluten, it's just, what is gluten, by the way? I don't even know what it is, but isn't it interesting? It's got to be some sort of, I mean, I know it's like a grain, but... I don't know exactly um, what the uh, per. Well, okay. No, I'm smart, guys. I swear. Um, but what's weird is that you pay more for gluten free things. It's kind of like my argument against shorts. I don't understand how in the world the economy is getting away with this. Dude, people are trying to fight the fight for ch chicken or lettuce. Why am I paying 50 cents to a dollar more for something that has less gluten? How are you going to take out? The good part of a food, and then charge me more for it. Okay, it's like those pre-packaged. It's like a lunchable or something like that. Oh, that gets hard. That's a, it's pretty. They're pretty cheap, but it's like giving me a a bag of Cheetos. Okay, and they go, well, these are normal Cheetos. They're four dollars, and then I have a bag of fat-free Cheetos, and they go, well, these are gonna be six dollars. I go, why? For what reason? I, w I wanted the fat. Why? And now I got to pay more for less of what I wanted? Dude, imagine somebody gave you half a bag of something and then upsold you on it. It's just not right. Anyways, back to the gluten thing at hand. Um, gluten is a protein found in cereal grains like wheat, rye, and barley. Okay, I knew that. But protein. Protein's essential. I do like that. Um, uh, is something about water added to the grains. It's often needed in bread. It's it's needed. You get it? Dude, gluten's needed. You heard it here first. Um, man, I feel like I'm... I know it's a late podcast, but... I should have put those yellow sunglasses back on because I'm 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 even more just <laughs> sharing. Um but you know what? I went way longer than I thought I was gonna do. Um I think that's all I have to say about the podcast <laughs> and gluten. Guys, I'm sorry. I know, I know it's been crazy. I know not a lot of that made sense, but that's what it's like to work with me. All right. This episode um this is what it would be like if I was your coworker, and all the things I'm saying right now, I'm at work as you're listening to this, okay, talking to people and doing all of this shame shtick, and um, and they're not even choosing to click on the video, all right? They're just by proximity. They're destined to fall into my snare, my trap of um different things. So, guys, what I'm trying to say is. Dude, you, I've had so many different dumb thoughts. It's hard to encapsulate all of them or even get close. Um, obviously, there's a penny in which you will make a financial decision. Sleep well. Jump off the wagon. Uh, bring back the word poser. And if you can, make sure to tell Chipotle to stuff it, but not the employees, um, before you stuff your face. What's up? And gluten is needed, but it's fine if it's free. Yeah, does that make sense? And there's a bunch of other dumb sayings that I, I come up with on the daily. So I think that's everything. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in Um, when you do, if you do, how you do, how do you do. Um, I am completely 
<sighs> I don't know, man. I'm so lost. I just genuinely, heart to heart, you want a heart to heart right now? My brain is fried, all right? This is me after 13 hours of work and, you know... Actually, I, I don't I don't sleep that well, and I don't nourish myself, and the only thing I've really had today is a gluten-free cookie. So, my my brain cells, okay, neurons, they're not all firing. So, if you clicked on this episode, oh man, I should have tied the watch thing in there. Um, anyways, yeah, if you clicked on this, if this is your first time, and you're like, oh, I was wondering why it was all over the place, um, just know that this was not an isolated instance. They're all, all the episodes are like this. Um, no, but I feel like I've, I've been even more so uh, insane. Or not insane, you know, but you know when you just can't, like, stay on a thought and you're like, switch, 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 switch. It's like I'm just sitting and, and clicking the remote control. I'm like, board, next, 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 which is how I listen to music, by the way. I, I love, I love music, and I would like to listen to a song in its entirety, but I'm I'm already ready for the next one by the time the chorus hits. I'm just like, oh, there's the chorus, go! And we, I was like, I don't, I, I, I already got the, I got, I got the verse, I got the bridge, I got the chorus. Let me try something new, um, and and I would like to, I would like to work on that. It's not like a attention thing. It's not a focus thing. It's more of a, um, I'm bored now. Next, or maybe it might be an attention. Okay, you know what? If we've discovered anything. During this episode of the middle of the night hour of of nonsense, it's that as narcissistic as you can be, you still might not know what you're talking about. And you can tell that to Hallmark. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I will see you in the next episode, and I love the peace.